Very good morning to you all. So uh, today's episode is another one of those where I am trying to expel and extinguish uh, another myth which exists, especially in the business world. And it is that big pile of horse shit that is kindness is a weakness. Nah, mate. So, <laughs> absolute bollocks again. Bollocks. And anyone who thinks that being kind is in some way attributed to being weak, um, 10 times out of 10, is insecure and probably isn't quite as accomplished and isn't quite as sure as they pretend to be because kindness is not a weakness. You can be really strong and kind. You can have incredibly high standards and be incredibly kind at the same time. So I'm going to talk today about why I think it is the very, very best course of action to go about your business being as kind as you possibly can to everybody. And I'm going to talk about my experience with this tactic and how I have found it to be a win, win, win. Mm. Win, win, win. You've heard of win, wins. This is a win, win, win. So I hope you are as excited about this as me. So first thing, the kinder you are to people, even though there are a few arseholes that walk amongst us, no question, the kinder you are to the majority of people, the more they want to do for you. And let me tell you a little story uh, that happened just before we got kicked out of our office. I'd literally just moved into an office which was three times the size of my original because we were growing quite quickly. And the office that we moved into was a little bit shabby, needed a bit of a lick of paint, needed a bit of a facelift. And the lads that work for me, they're all pretty handy, to be honest. Um, I've probably got more chance of talking the office into actually painting itself. But the lads that work for me, you know, they're not shy of a bit of manual labour. And they were saying, look, Dan, we'll come in at the weekends. We'll all paint it. We'll go out for some beers, whatever. And because I just signed a 12-month lease, I said, hang on a minute, let me speak to the landlord and let me see what we can get done. So I called the landlord up, who's actually a good mate of mine, Neil, and I said to him, you know, what can you do, Neil? Look, this is a bit shoddy. This needs a bit of finishing, X, Y, and Z. And Neil said, I'll tell you what I'll do, mate. I'll give you Jordan. Now, Jordan is a young lad who does all the maintenance on this big serviced office. He said, I'll give you Jordan for a couple of days and anything he doesn't get done, because there'll no doubt be quite a bit left after those two days, because it's quite intricate. There's all black wooden beams everywhere. It's got a lot of character. It's a bit on the piss, but it's quality. Um, anything he doesn't get done, you boys pick up the slack. And I said, sound, you know, saves us a couple of days. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate it. So, we agreed the following Wednesday that Jordan was going to come in. Now, before Jordan came into our office to paint it, Jordan would always be found, you know, in and around the building, doing any manner of things from laying slabs to glossing balustrades, you know, and everything in between. And I think it would be absolutely fair to say that by and large, people ignore Jordan. You know, he, he isn't a massively confident kid. He's not the kind of guy that's going to say good morning, you know, to everyone that walks through the door. He keeps himself to himself. Um, but for all the time I've been there, I've had a bit of crap with Jordan. So every time this weird thing started, every time we'd see him doing anything, I'd say, go on, Jordan. And he'd have a really, really good laugh to himself. And then we kind of got friendlier and I stopped and I spoke to him. And then because I was doing that and I was telling the lads about saying, go on, Jordan, every time they walk past him, they do exactly the same thing. So then this became like just this little funny gimmick that we did every time we saw Jordan. But genuinely, it seemed to be bringing him out of his shell a little bit. So Jordan came in on day one of the, of the painting. Um, and effectively what Jordan did is he worked eight to half five for both those days. About halfway through the second day, he actually drove to B&Q to buy some gloss paint to paint the one, two, three doors that are in my office. And by half five on the second day, he had painted an office which he very, very easily could have got away with painting half of. And that's because he liked us and we liked him. We were kind. 
He even said, I've worked in every office in this building and this is by far and away the best place to be. And that's because we took a bit of time to be kind. Now, I was kind to him and it meant that I didn't have to spend two days of my time painting my office. And I've got hundreds of stories that are exactly the same as this. So you tell me now how kindness is a weakness. Kindness is looking like a pretty clever move to me. The second win with kindness is a weakness or being kind all the time is this. A lot of people are terrified of um, being taken for granted. A lot of people think that if they lead with their kindest, most generous foot, then people will take the piss. Now, as I said, you can be strong and kind. And what I would suggest you do is you start, as in maybe you've just taken on a member of staff or somebody's just started working within your, the place you work, or maybe you've just met somebody new, you start off firing on all cylinders. You do as much as you can for that person at all times. You be as kind as you possibly can. You, you give them the benefit of the doubt, okay? Don't make them gain your trust because when, they, when you make somebody gain your trust, it's actually a little bit of a false environment. They don't know what they're buying into. If your culture and your personality is a kind one by nature, show them everything you've got to begin with. And the really great thing about this tactic is, as I said, the vast majority of people will react positively to it. Okay. The odd few that don't, once that disrespect creeps in, once that kindness isn't reciprocated, believe you me, it feels really, really personal. And when something feels really, really personal, it's actually, in my experience, a lot easier to pull that person on it. You've got so much ammo, you can pull that person on it. And at that point, there's a decision to be made, you know? There is a decision to be made. And actually, it gives you the strength. When you put your heart on, the, on your sleeve, when you put it all on the line, and maybe somebody, somebody, you know, just veers off track or, you know, has a bit of a wobble, you can actually go to them and you can say, look, come on, you know, what's this about? I've given you my all. And that is, again, for me, a really, really sensible tactic in business. And the last one, the last win is my favorite. Here's the thing. When you are out there being as kind as you possibly can, being as generous as you possibly can, some people, and these are probably the people that think kindness is a weakness, are gonna push back. They're not, gonna, they're not going to give you the respect you think you deserve. They're not going to reciprocate that kindness. And they are the people, or they are certainly my people, that drive me more, sadly, than the people that show me unwavering support. You need two things in terms of your crew that are around you. You need people that are on your team. You need cheerleaders, okay? And then you need people that fuel your fire. And the people that fuel my fire are the ones that don't give me back what I give them. And you find those people by being incredibly kind. And when you're incredibly kind, the cream rises to the top. And those dregs at the bottom, they're like the coals for your fire. And if you use them in a kind of, I'll show you kind of way, that'll get you out of bed earlier. That'll make you do an extra hour of work at the end of the day. If you really got a vision and you know where you're going, in a, in a, in a backward sort of way, I believe the reason we're, we're going to kind of make this progress isn't because of the ones who show you undying love and support. It's the ones who doubt you. And the best way to find the ones who doubt you is to be completely kind and generous to everybody around you because they will show their faces. So I hope you've enjoyed today and we will catch up as always tomorrow. Have a good day.